Well, Mary says it was a long time ago because her mother was a devout Catholic, went to Mass every morning, and her father was a devout atheist and who poked a lot of fun at his wife for her belief. So there's, there was this dichotomy between belief and disbelief, irony and belief. And in Caribbean couples, religion is often a woman's business rather than the man's. So there, there was this kind of uh, contradiction or irony between the husband and wife, which kicked off uh, uh, inspiration for the gospel according to the new world. But after she read three books, one by Josie Saramago, then Amini Notom and Koitsi, who all wrote about the life of Jesus, his childhood and his death, um, she made the leap. She said, if they can do it, why can't I? When Marie says it's a final decision because of her health, uh, you know, um, she has lost her eyesight, so it makes writing very difficult. And I think we'll talk about that later. But it doesn't mean that in her head she's not writing stories, it's just that they're not allowed out. Well, Marie says she had two excellent assistants who did not change a word while she was dictating the novel. Um, it was much more difficult shaping the novel in her head. Uh, it, it had to be constructed in her head. Um, she had to match the sound and meaning of the words in her head. And never forget that a writer is also a musician. So she had to match um, the sound and the meaning of each word. And all that was going on in her head. And I must add myself as the translator, she was extremely clever at going back and forth in her head. She knew exactly where she was. She could, she could go back to a chapter, come back again, and she could remember exactly where she was on every page and every chapter. Well, the translation of the Gospel according to the New World was fairly straightforward. But I think the only difficulty must, might be for someone who doesn't know the New Testament. Uh, for example, the three rum guzzlers at the beginning of the book are the three wise men, if you look carefully. <laughs> and the multiplication of the braided loaves is the miracle of the multiplication of the five loaves and the fish. And the Last Supper becomes uh, when uh, Pascal says, eat this, the gratons, in memory of me. And the gratons is a kind of Provençal pizza type of food. So it's always a cultural challenge. Um, but in my opinion, it was fairly straightforward. It was just this idea of, uh, ev does everybody know the New Testament? Because they'll be reading it at a different level. If you don't know it, they'll be reading at a different level than those who are familiar with the Bible itself. Um, translation is always a cultural challenge, but that's another topic. Well, I've always felt very free translating Marie's. Um, unlike when I translated Franz Fanon, because when I translated Franz Fanon, I knew that there were a lot of Fanon scholars looking over my shoulder. But with Marie's, I feel totally free. Um, that doesn't mean I'm unfaithful in my translation. Um, I've always tried to get the equivalent effect for an, of the original French for the English-speaking reader. Marie's and I both agree that the translation is a text on its own. You might be reading a story by Marie Condé, but you're probably reading Richard Philcox's version of that story. Everything is in the essence, and there's no harm in a translation being creative. Well, you'll be very disappointed with our answer. <laughs>
Uh, for Mary, the translation is the last part of being betrayed after the editor has decided to change the title and even the, even the story sometimes itself. She, she feels completely dispossessed of her text. Uh, incidentally, Mary has never ever taught her work in translation. Um, uh, we remain, although we work together, although we, we are on very close terms together, we remain intimate enemies, as we like to call ourselves. Uh, I um, am constantly in, in doubt about certain words and certain meanings. I have the author beside me, but asking questions is sometimes a formidable task. Uh, as author and wife, she trusts her husband and translator, but that's how we work or rather don't work together.